Hi guys, Ian Harrigan here. I've uh, been working on the Alter Bridge song uh, written by Mark Tremonti and Miles Kennedy, Watch Over You. I think it was on Alter Bridge's first album, uh, but there's a few acoustic versions out there with Miles Kennedy playing it at various performances, which are really interesting and I've been trying to include it in my set recently. I'm going to walk you through this. There's a few other videos on YouTube looking at this song. Some of them are pretty good um, and some of them are just plain wrong uh, and I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd uh, see if I could have a go and help you out a little bit. One thing I wanted to get into, the there's a lot of comments on the videos that I've been looking at saying can you show me the exact rhythm patterns and can you tab out the rhythms, the strumming patterns that, that he's using. Um, I'm not a huge fan of doing that so I'm not going to really do that and, and uh, there's a couple of reasons why. Um, first of all, if you watch different performances of him playing the song, he plays it differently every time. So why try and work on one specific one? Uh, the main reason though is because even though this isn't my song and it isn't your song when you're singing it, um, I'm, f I'm a firm believer in for the three or four minutes that you're singing the song, it's your song because it's your story and you're using this song somebody else's song, to tell your story to your audience right there in that moment whenever you're performing the song. And if you don't think about it that way, I kind of have to sort of question why you're singing the song at all. So the way you strum it works with the way you sing it at that time. And if you're feeling slightly differently next time, you'll strum it a different way maybe because you're singing it a different way, that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm not going to go through every upstroke and every downstroke. That said, the song is basically in a 4-4 four, four time, one, two, three, four, and my right hand is generally going one-y and a two-y and a three-y and a four-y and, and four, two downstrokes, two upstrokes for every beat, two, three, four, and... Okay, so the whole way through the song, playing loud or quiet, my right hand doesn't stop going up and down like that. Sometimes I'm missing the strings and sometimes I'm hitting all of the strings all of the time. So the key thing there is to keep your hand moving in that tempo throughout the beat. One, two, three, four, one. The whole way through the song. And then you find... When you get into the singing... You find that the strumming follows the lyrics. Okay, so work on the strumming to get your own feel and your own expression of the song. I'll zoom in now, we'll go through each of it section by section and we'll show you exactly what I'm trying to do here. It's more or less what he's doing on more or less most of the performances that I've seen him doing on YouTube. Okay, let's start with the tuning. The song is played in an open G chord, so you tune all of the strings so that when you play a chord without fretting any strings, it plays a G chord. You get that by tuning the sixth E string down one tone to a D. You tune the fifth A string down one tone to a G. The D string is left alone. G is left alone. B is left alone. And then you tune the first E string down one tone to a D. So you've got an open G chord with the root note here on the fifth string. So we get into the introduction. Now the introduction has uh, four basic shapes in it. I'll talk you through those. Uh, the first obviously is an open chord. The second shape that you play, uh, the first one that you fret, is here on the 10th fret. So you play the second string with your third finger on the 10th. You play the fourth string with your second finger on the 10th fret. And then the other strings are played open. So you get a nice, it's a very nice ringy open voicing. The second shape has your fingers on the same two strings, the second and the fourth, but moved up to the twelfth fret. The third shape moves down to the fifth fret, so you leave your third finger still on the second string, but on the fifth fret, and then your second finger moves to the fifth string. And then the fourth shape, lift your third finger off the fifth fret on the second string, and play it on the third fret with your index finger. Now that's going to be a bit of a stretch. And at the same time, move your third finger to the fourth string on the fifth fret. Okay, now you don't have to do that all in one go. The way he plays it is... Okay, so you play first shape, lift your third finger, then drop your third finger. So you get to play that sort of 
transition chord and then drop your third finger in okay so if we play the first part of the intro three four okay second part starts the same way and here the next thing you do is you put your little finger onto the first string on the fifth fret then you lift your little finger off and you play the first string on the fourth fret with your index finger and then we play a little sort of twiddly bit that goes with your first and little fingers now playing with my first little fingers because you leave these two fingers where they are And in time, that sounds like three, four. So it's quite quick. I'll play it a little bit more slowly. Three, four. The next part uses the same as the first part. part just stays there the simple shape on the fifth fret and that's the intro now for the verse we're using pretty much exactly the same shapes as we've used in the introduction so I'll just play it through reasonably slowly and try to sing it as we go through I haven't got Miles Kennedy's voice let's face it who does but excuse so excuse the vocals but you'll know where we are in the song as I sing it through Two, three, four. Leaves are on the ground. Fall has come. Skies are turning gray. Like a mound of. And they're right at the end. And he does this on some performances, but not all of them. When you get to the end of that, just for the last half bead in the bar, slide that shape from the fifth fret without moving your fingers off the strings up to the seventh fret. So you're moving effectively from a C chord to a D chord. So you get that three, four. So just a very quick slide. And then back to the second verse, which is Pretty much the same as the first, except right at the end. Keep an eye on what we're doing right at the end. I tried to carry you, make you whole. It was never I must go. Okay. So I'll talk you through that last bar. The first thing you notice is that he stays here on the 12th fret. He doesn't come back to the 5th. And then for the last couple of beats in the bar, we go to a transition chord. Instead of coming to the 5th fret, we go back to the 4th fret. So your 2nd finger goes to the 6th string and your 3rd finger goes to the 4th string, which is effectively an octave on that uh, F-sharp note play that half chord. It's a transition chord that gets us into the first chord of the chorus. So the shapes we're using for the chorus then. After the transition chord we go into what is effectively an E minor chord. So the first shape you've got is on the second fret, sixth string with your second finger. On the fourth string second fret with your third finger and then your little finger drops to the third fret on the second string now you can do these that with those two fingers i prefer to do it with these it gives me a bit more feel and control so that's your first shape 
The second shape that he moves to is easy to get to because it looks kind of the same. Leave your little finger where it is on the third fret. Move your third finger down to the third string on the second fret. Move your second finger down to the fifth string. So from here to the second shape, which is moving these two fingers down one string. Then the third shape back to the fifth fret that we're already familiar with and then open and then there's a little to get to that transition chord again where we're playing I'm going to use my second finger and I start on the second fret on the third string and slide up to the fourth fret just gives that open G chord a little bit more dynamic and then the transition chord again so then he goes round again second shape and then to the C shape plays that once and then holds it while he counts into the next verse <clears throat> okay so I'll take it from the verse before and we'll go into the chorus I try to Then the next verse is exactly the same, apart from in the third line when he sings, How can you love? He just hits the chord once, doesn't do the part, he just holds that chord. Love someone, not yourself. Back to the transition chord and into the Ooh, is gonna save you when I'm gone. and play through it this time well, now for the bridge into the uh, loud part there's a little instrumental break that he does up here around the 12th 13th 15th and 10th fret so I'll play through it and then I'll show you what I'm doing So, when we get to the when I'm gone, okay, you play that for the two bars, one, two, three, four, and on the first beat of the bar, your second finger is going to the 12th fret on the second string, and the little melody we're playing is up to the 13th fret, back to the 10th, hammer on to the 13th, sorry, 12th, then up to the 15th, 13th, so a little hammer on pull off. Okay, so I'll play that again in time. Two, three, four. Okay, so we'll play that with all of the strings. Two, three, four. And then the transition chord. And then the loud part of the break um, starts with the same chord as the chorus starts. Okay, so the 
break and I'm not even going to begin to try to sing this in the right uh, in the right register I'll sing it an octave down but your shapes again are that E minor shape so you've got the second fret on the sixth and fourth strings and your little finger on the third fret on the second and when the go to the fifth fret that same shape that you're using we'll break your fall open chord and then we're playing that on the seventh fret the second and the fifth strings playing back to the I can go on fifth fret and watch you lose it all open it's more than I can. Seventh fret. Take back to the. Who ease your pain? Ease your pain. Okay, so very simple. We've used all the shapes before, so we'll go through it in detail from that break. So what I'm doing across those four bars, I'm just adding in a little hammer on or a drop in where I'm playing the second string on the first fret and the fourth string on the second fret. So it's a very quick drop in, drop off, and then the second time through you do it twice. Two, three. because he's going to repeat the chorus to get from the first the end of the first chorus into the beginning of the second what you're doing is you get to that fifth fret then you lift this finger off you lift your third finger off so you're just playing the fifth fret on the fifth string and then fourth fret second fret and open or you could do it as a as a double parallel so move your second finger to the fourth fret move your first finger to the third fret on the second string then move both of those back two frets so you've got the first fret on the second string and the second fret on the fifth string and then open so you have that he does that in one performance that I've seen in another performance he simply goes uses only the fifth string and to get out once we've done that Whichever you prefer, play the transition chord again. And then we're into the last get out. So it's the same chords, just a slightly different melody. slide up to the seventh fret just to get back into the very last get out Snow is on the same as the intro Just move from the 10th to the 12th and then lift your fingers and play the open chord 
And that's the whole song. <laughs>